So cylindrical coordinates should feel pretty familiar, um, and the reason for that is that the z coordinate stays the same. And in the xy plane, you're just working in polar. So you already know how to do this. You did a lot of this in Math 126. Um, so the conversions are exactly the same. x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and then z is just z. Um, and then a couple extra conversions that might be useful that you already know are x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Um, and if you had to solve for theta, probably the best thing is that tan theta is y over x. Um, okay, so let's see how to plot a point in cylindrical coordinates, maybe. So here's our x, y, and z axis. Um, so before I was walking uh, over in the x direction, over some amount in the y direction, and up some amount in the z direction. Um, so in cylindrical coordinates, the z is going to stay the same. The r, uh, basically we're going to take a horizontal plane that contains that point, and then look at that in polar. So the r, r is actually going to turn out to be your distance to the z axis. Um, before, in the xy plane, it was distance to the origin, but now that we're in three dimensions, it's distance to the z-axis. And then the theta, you have to draw this horizontal thing, kind of parallels the, the positive x-axis, and then there's your theta. So theta still goes from 0 to 2 pi. Um, it can go bigger, you just, you just start repeating, just like in polar coordinates. Um, so a couple things that are instructive, um, you don't necessarily have to know this, but... Um, uh, so we have uh, variables r, theta, and z. Things that are instructive are um, what if we set those to a constant. So what if r equals 2? What is that? Um, in polar coordinates, it was a circle, but now r, um, we can even think about r as distance to z-axis to think about what that is. Now we're in three dimensions. Um, and basically, it's it's polar, but we're letting z be whatever we want um, rather than just zero. So r equals two is actually going to be we're going to get a circle in every plane going up, and we actually get a cylinder. Um, so the graph of that is a cylinder in cylindrical coordinates. Thus, the name cylindrical coordinates, of course. Um, if theta equals pi over four. Um, so back in polar land, that was just a ray, right? We went pi over 4, 45 degrees, it was this thing. Um, in cylindrical coordinates, uh, that's going to get promoted to three dimensions as well, and we'll have that in every plane going up. So we'll actually get um, a half plane. And if we allow r to be negative, we actually get the full plane. We can get the other side too. Um, and then finally, z equals, let's say, 5. Um, well, that hasn't changed, right? z equals 5, we just go up to 5, and we get um, a horizontal horizontal plane that cuts the z-axis at the point 5. Um, all right, so nothing too complicated. The problems will look a lot similar to what you've done before. Um, I won't do any specific examples on cylindrical coordinates now, but once we have spherical coordinates introduced, um, we'll do a couple examples that compare them.